quality of the restaurants is mind-boggling. Some awesome trend-sitting restaurants, great food. Oaxacan pasilla is a chili, which when cooked down gives you this nice sweetness but also this smoky, spicy flavor. Italy has done a great job of what they're putting on the shelves. It is authentic to the area that it's from. When I was creating the product, I only wanted to use fresh raw material. It won a 99 out of 100. So we went from 10% alcohol to about 60% alcohol in that first distillation. It's a great opportunity to exchange information and kind of get a pulse for, for everything else that's going on and to find out what's working in their restaurants. I think there is no situation in which design thinking cannot bring more efficient, more effective problem solving. Going through those craft cocktails, testing the bartenders and really watching what they can do, you know, enjoying their craft. We wanted to bring a true Italian dining to Chicago, like a neighborhood feel, nothing over fancy, nothing super expensive. We also have another restaurant called Nonina. We opened that up as a tribute to our grandmothers. Her values became my values and going out and finding the best ingredient and that's what we do at the restaurant. Decided to do a seared sea scallop with olive oil and white bean puree. Braised leeks that have been braised real slow with olive oil, rosemary, sea salt, black pepper. We chop truffles and put them inside at the end. The second course is a classic Italian pasta. It's uh, just small ravioli stuffed with mascarpone and fresh thyme, tossed with butter. I decided for this one the little porcini broth. Chopped black truffles inside again and then shaved truffles on top. And then for the entree, we did a slow braised short rib with spring pea shoots and pea sprouts on top. So frito, which is Italian, like carrot, celery, red onions, red wine reduction with the, the short ribs. They cooked about six hours, very slow, over a soft semolina. And then we did a lemon, candied lemon, eggless custard for you over a blackberry sauce with berries and fresh mint and candied citrus on top. Saw for the first time wild strawberries uh, that were infused into an after-dinner drink that was amazing with Spanakopita. Always paid homage to cooking in Argentina, which is over leno, which is over wood. Burning American white oak, and we're making coals. And it gives the food a really unique flavor. It's not smoky, it tastes different, it imparts a very subtle flavor. What is somewhat limiting with just having that is also liberating because we know exactly this is the cuisine we're doing. The beet salad is a little bit of house-made savory granola, some compressed feta. There's a coriander yogurt, sunflower shoots that we're actually growing downstairs underneath the lights. The oysters, we will always have on the menu, but the set changes as the seasons change. That's celery root puree with a celery root slaw. Toss a little bit of remoulade. There's some chives. There's a little bit of malden. Wild-caught Gulf of Mexico shrimp. Charred eggplant puree. Tomatillo salsa with mirin and Fresnos and a little bit of ginger. I really want people to come in here and feel like it's a place where you can have a drink because our drink program is really, really great. This function is the office for the Checker Taxi Association, at least from like the late 30s on. The lap was underneath plaster, so we took all the plaster off and redid all the wood. You know, in Chicago, everything is sort of influenced by Central America. Mexico. I like these flavors. I love couscous. And that found itself on the menu. But essentially we've got Denver cut lamb ribs. We cure them, then we marinate them. This marinade is very much like what my dad would put on flank steak when I was a kid. Coleman's hot mustard, grapes, peanuts, cilantro, and green onions, and that's, that's all. Like we'll build a fire underneath the two grills and render them, and then we braise them, and then we grill them again. You know, it needs virtually nothing, just the yogurt for a little acidity. Fennel salad, some herbs, done. To give up a gas stove, you know, which when you're dealing with a whole lot of consumers, is a very big step and a challenge and a big risk, but to stick with your guns and just go with that passion because it's what you want to create, I think it's phenomenal. And the idea is that you can come in here, eat in a different room, order a different menu, and have a different experience. This restaurant has about 110 seats if you include the bar. The bar is essentially the only walk-in space that we do in this restaurant. It's all reservation otherwise. Stephanie Izard is the chef at all three properties. She had one top chef. This is Fulton Market West Loop. When Girl on the Goat opened, there wasn't much there at all. The reality on Girl on the Goat is seven years old. We're booked on reservations there, 4.30 to 11 o'clock every single night of the week. It does four to 600 covers based on time of year every single night of the week. Stephanie spent a lot of time in China, and as she was there, she was growing an appreciation for how traditional Chinese food is done. So we do 
all of our own noodle making back here. Five or six different types of noodles are made fresh. Some of the noodles are basically made to order throughout the course of the night. We do all of our dumpling rolling back there, everything done in-house again. Soup dumplings are made to order. Short rib and bone marrow pot stickers is our top selling item here. We do anywhere from like 50 to 75 deliveries a night. Kind of like this multi-concept idea. There has been some seasonal changes and to bring fresh ingredients that are either grown locally or just in season. The culture now in the food side of Chicago has definitely changed. We were strictly a meat and potato town. Now we're this whole culturally diverse. Very comforting to know that there's a new side of food that's being exposed here to the Chicago market.